Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here, and for today's video I have a couple of cards to share that I've created using some really cool um, powders. These are the Ken Oliver Crafts Color Burst Powders, and I use these to create some fun backgrounds that I'm going to be sharing in today's video. These are a very fun, unique product. Um, they come in these little bottles, and I just kind of keep them in this little bowl here. And they're kind of like eyedropper bottles, and they are concentrated powder. And when you use these, you're going to want a few supplies on hand. You're going to want paper towels and baby wipes, and a lot of them, because they can get kind of messy. You're going to want a water spritzer with water in it. Any kind will work. And then you're also going to want a heat gun if you want to do any kind of drying rather than letting it air dry. And you're also going to want some paper to use these on. I prefer watercolor paper um, because they are a watercolor um, type product. You use them with a lot of water, so you definitely want a paper that's going to hold up to the powders and the water going on top of them. So I like to use watercolor paper. I like Strathmore, and I also like the Tim Holtz watercolor paper. So I completely covered this watercolor paper in water, and now I'm just kind of letting this, the this powder kind of poof onto the page. I'm barely pressing it. I'm kind of just kind of giving it a little press to make some air go through it. Or you can just kind of tap on them over the water. And you can see here when the pigments hit the water, it just splatters the color. It's so intense and so vibrant, and it's so unique and fun. Um, it's they're addicting when you start playing with them. You can kind of mix and match the colors and use colors that you know will work well together and you can use a tiny bit of powder with a ton of water. You can use a lot of um, water with very little powder. Like it just depends on what kind of look you're going for and I just really recommend experimenting and playing around with them and just kind of letting yourself get messy and do all the different things that you can with the powders to kind of see what you can get them to do. So for this one here, I just mix the orange and the lemon yellow, and I put a lot of water on, and I'm kind of just moving the paper around to show that you can really mix them together and create a really fun watercolor wash background. Um, and you you also can kind of do less water to kind of keep more of a spotty, vivid look, and you'll be able to see that a little more in the video as we go on here. So now I just wanted to show something else that I thought was kind of fun when I use these. I'm going to be using the blue and the purple colors here, and these are this is probably my favorite color combination. I love how these two look together. And look at that. As soon as I kind of put it onto the water, it just wicks out, and you have the intense color in the center where the powders immediately hit the water, and then it just wicks out and kind of softens in color as it goes. It looks kind of like fireworks on paper um, is kind of what I think of when I watch these react to the water. So for this one here, I went ahead and completely covered the paper first with water, and then I added the powders on, and now I'm going ahead and adding more water on top of the powders that are on there. And the more water you add, the more the powders kind of spread out and blend together, and you get more like of a marbly watercolor look. So if you want it more like the dotty spotted look, you just want to use less water, and if you want to kind of get the marbleized look, you want to add a little bit more, and then if you want to get the modeled like really watercolor background look, you want to add quite a bit of water. So now that one there that I first did, I'm going to let that one just set aside and air dry, and I'm going to go ahead and start working on another background. So for this one, I'm using the exact same um, powders that I used on the first one. I'm using the blues and the purples, and I'm going ahead and kind of pretty much doing the same thing. I added the water first, then the powders, and then I added some additional water on top. And now I'm going to take a stylus tool and kind of run it through this wet mixture that I have going on here and this kind of just helps to move the color around and kind of keeps the trail of the stylus in the background piece so as you can see as I'm kind of going through there I'm picking up the darker purple and blue colors that are still really really wet and I'm kind of dragging them through the background piece and it's completely leaving all those lines there as I pull that through and now I'm going ahead and kind of adding some heat to this to dry it. You can see it really toned down a bit in color because I added some paper towels to sop it up. And when the piece finished, I was left with those fun lines in it. So I just want to show you that you can kind of manipulate what you have on that design. Now for this piece here, I'm actually adding the powders to a dry piece of watercolor paper. I don't have anything on here yet. I'm just going ahead and kind of tapping some powders on there. And it doesn't look like there's much there. And it 
kind of looks like I'm not going to get much of an effect until I go ahead and start to spray this with water. As soon as the water hits the surface, you can see that it just completely reacts with the pigments that are on there, even though you could barely even see them all. And it just gives me this great dotted effect, which is, this is what I was talking about. If you use less water, you're going to get this great kind of really defined um, colored areas versus the really blended look of all of the colors mixing together. So I'm going ahead now and just using my heat tool to heat this and I'm kind of moving the colors around. I didn't want it to be really dotty and concentrated. I wanted them to blend a little bit more. So I went ahead and added some heat to it and then kind of dried it a little bit and then I had a little area that was still pretty wet and had no yellow in it so I wanted to add a little bit more color. And as you can see here, I completely blended those to create a fun green background for this card that I designed here. And then I also designed a second card, which you're going to see in the video here. I'm going to show you how I did this one. Um, but the background piece I actually created um, yesterday when I was playing with the colors for the first time. And I loved how it turned out. It kind of turned out like a tie-dye galaxy looking background. So I let it dry overnight and then now I'm going to create a card with it. So I have a Hero Art stencil here and I'm going to be using the star portion of it and I also have translucent embossing paste and this is just a clear embossing paste so when I put it on it's going to look like it's white and then when it dries it's going to dry completely clear. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth this over the stencil so that I completely cover all of the little stars in that little stencil there. And it's easy to do. It's kind of like frosting a cake. You just kind of slide your um, craft knife over the stencil until you fill in all of the areas that you want the embossing paste in. And you don't need a craft knife. You can use an old credit card or an old gift card or even a piece of cardstock. Anything that will kind of glide over the top and kind of smooth that embossing paste over the stencil. And then now it's I have it fully covered, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the stencil. And now you can see there I have all those great stars on top of that background piece. And like I said, this is clear emb embossing paste, so this is not what the stars will look like when it's finished. They're going to actually be clear. And I missed catching it on camera, but before I let this embossing paste fully dry, I added some Judikins Iridescent Sparkle Embossing Powder on top, and it stuck to that wet embossing powder on the stars. And when all the embossing powder was fully dry, I just went ahead and heated to set that embossing powder. So now I have some fun clear stars on the background but they also have a nice shiny shimmer to them with a little bit of glitter. So now I'm going ahead and adhering this piece. I cut it down a little bit smaller with a rectangle stitch die and I used a lot of adhesive on the back of it just because it was really wet and warped and I really wanted to to kind of lie smooth on that cardstock piece. So I adhered it to a black mat and then I'm going to make a top folding white card base and I'm just going to go ahead and adhere this finished piece onto it with foam adhesive and I used a 3M foam roll and you'll see me add that at the end um, when I finish the rest of the card design and I completely covered it because once again I didn't want the warping to affect the finished card. So before I went ahead and adhered that, I'm going to go ahead and finish the card design. I cut out a moon out of black paper and the word stars from My Favorite Things and also stamped a sentiment from a My Favorite Things stamp set on a piece of white cardstock to run across the top there. And I decided as I played around with it that I didn't like the moon die cut on the card design so I didn't end up using it. But I did use the word stars that I had cut out and I decided to put that directly under the white sentiment strip that I have there and kind of make it all look like it's one full sentiment. And I ended up liking that a lot more. I didn't, I liked kind of letting the background be the focus and not putting too much on it to compete with that. So now you can see here, like I said, I completely covered this piece in foam adhesive and this is just going to help with the warping and help that panel piece to lie completely flat on the card base. So now that I have that adhered, that finishes the card design. And I'm just going to add a little bit of Tim Holtz mirrored stars and some silver stickles um, to the card front. Just for a little bit of detail, um, just kind of add a little bit more stars and kind of glitter to the card front. Just to kind of play on that galaxy nighttime um, scene that I have going on here. And then once I have all of that added, the card's finished. It's got some great stars in the background that are subtle but still there. And then it also has the great sparkle and shine and the mirrored stars. So it's just a really fun design that really lets you focus on the cool watercolor background that we've created with the color burst powders. So that's the card that I created um, today. And then this is also the second card I created with the other background that I shared um, with the blue and the yellow powders. 
And once again, I let the focus be the background and just use a simple sentiment with um, heat embossing in black and then a few hearts and silver stickles. So that completes the cards. I hope you enjoyed this video and I really encourage you to try out the Ken Oliver Color Burst. Thanks for watching.